Shavua Tov, Agut Avoch, and welcome to our program. The Shabbos is the Shabbos before Pesach, the Shabbos before Yud Aleph Nisan, and the Shabbos is called Shabbos HaGodil, the Great Shabbos. And why is this Shabbos called Shabbos HaGodil? Well, because there was a, there was a great miracle. Let's see what the Rebbe says about it. And the question the Rebbe asks concerning that miracle. Now, we know that it was, a great, it was a great miracle because of the elders of Mitzrayim, the Bechirim. Let's see what the Alta Rebbe says in Shulchan Oruch. The Rebbe quotes it extensively. Pesach Mitzrayim hoyemikhi mebeosar lachedesh. That Pesach Mitzrayim you took on the tenth day. And the reason we chose the Sicha, because the Shabbos is Yud Nisan, the tenth day of Nisan. And the Alta Rebbe says, Ve'esei hayeim Shabbos hoyo. And that day was Shabbos like this year. That's why we chose the Sicha. That Yud Nisan was on Shabbos. So Shabbos HaGodl basically was on the 10th day of Nisan, as it is this year. When the Jewish people took the sect, the, 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 the Kodim, when they took the lamb, and they tied the lamb to the bed, the Bechirim of Mitzrayim came around, and they asked him, Why, what are you doing? You're taking a calf, you're taking a sheep, you're tying it to the bed. What does this mean? That this is going to be a sacrifice for God. And then they said to him, That Almighty God is going to kill the Bechirim of Mitzrayim. And then we will go out of Egypt, of Mitzrayim, and we are going to bring this, this, this lamb for a kodem. So the elders went to their own parents. And they also went to Padi. To ask Padi, they said that since now there is a danger that they are going to get killed, so they went to Pali, the firstborn, the elders, and they went to their parents, and Pali refused. And the Bechiris, the firstborn, made a melchom, a wage of the war against their own families, and they killed a lot of them. This is what it says. That the Mitzrayim, the Mitzrayim, were smitten through their pchelis, through their firstborn. And this is, was instituted that this that this ness is 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 is, is, is uh, we should remember it, commemorate it for generations, and they call this Shabbos Shabbos Agodl. And the Rebbe asks. You know, we're talking about Nisan and Hogonisis and Hogotivis, the natural order of events, the supernatural order of events. In this nest, you don't see the supernatural. It seems that something like that was very logical. The Bchelis went to Pali. They told Pali that we are afraid because they heard from the Jewish people that there's going to be a plague of the elders, of the, of the Bechelis, and this is why, they, and they don't want to die, so they want Pali to send them out, and Pali didn't want, so they waged the war. So this seems to be something natural, not supernatural at all. And we are used to Nisim, so why is this Nes called Nes Godil? We will return to that in a moment. But first, our customary story. The basic before we get to our customary story. We're troubled. Unfortunately, the news in the world is not good. The news in Crown Heights, unfortunately, is not good. We lost friends, chaveyadim, relatives. No words, no words. Let's see what 
the Kli Yoko says, we'll learn it inside, and then we'll see what the Mita Lodeva says. It's the Kli Yoko at the end of Shmeis. You find it in a few places. It's at the end of Shmeis. I think it's also in Chukas. The end of Shmeis, the people came to Meshad Abenu with a complaint. What did you do? You made it worse. And the Rebbe said, told the Matosir that you're going to see. So the Kleokal says like this, Behayodua, it is known. Shekachi Hamido, this is the measure and this is the nature. Shebechol Yem Somuch Laleisa Shachal, that every day before daybreak, Hacheshech Machshich Beyeser Min Cheshkas Alaylo, the darkness intensifies more in the, with the darkness of night. And after that, the light of the more of the morning breaks through and goes off. And then he says that we should that what does it mean when you see an intensification of darkness? You see Shazman Hageulo Kerevo Levatel Kolpu of Shalpari. You see that Azman Hageulo is going to annul all the activities of Pari, the Pari of generations. And Bemele, that's that's what's happening. Before the Gula Hamitis Viashlemo, there's an intensification of darkness. Before the daybreak, before the light, before the eternal light of the Gula Hamitis Viashlemo. Now, the Mithal Rebbe in Imri Bina writes about it and he says like this These are the words of the Mithal Rebbe. Lifnei aleis hashachal gevel acheshech beyesel, mishum she'el hashachal kol evlovi. The Mithra Lodebe writes, Lifnei aleis hashachal, before the, the morning star breaks, before daybreak, gevel acheshech beyesel, darkness is going to be the strongest in, intensified. Mishum she'el hashachal kol evlovi. Because the light of the morning is close to come. And then the Mithal Rebbe says, when he gave it to us, The great Golos and the great Sodas that we have suffered. And he's talking to us. It's because there is a greater light that is going to come. There's a great light that is about to come. That great light, says the Mithal Rebbe, is greater than the light and the air of Matan Tere, and that is the air of Moshiach. And therefore, before the air shall Moshiach lights and shines and break through, there's going to be an intensification of darkness. And the Rebbe Nishma Satan, it's now a hundred years from Tofri Shpei, the Rebbe Nishma Satan says, because the, this is also what the Gemara says, because the Meshich a chutzpe yazge. Why is it that there's so much chutzpe in this world? I don't know if you ever ask yourself this question. But there's no, what you hear, what you hear today it's the kind of chutzpah from youngsters. Years, years ago, you didn't hear it. And that is also the answer, because that is the darkness before the coming of Mashiach. Rabbi say, unfortunately, we, the Jewish people collectively, have experienced darkness. We have experienced chalbenes. We have experienced problems. We have experienced plagues. But what is happening now, the darkness in which the world is enveloped now is unprecedented. There was never such a darkness in this world. Was there ever such a darkness where you close down shuls, all botechnisies, all botemidroses throughout the world? Was there ever such a darkness where you close down yeshivas, 
boy schools, girl schools, educational institutions? Was there ever was there ever a situation where you closed down mikvoys all over the world? A darkness like this, Rabbi say, one does does not have to be a genius to figure out. There, there was never an intensification of darkness such as we have experienced now. To close, to close all shuls, as someone says, Almighty God threw Jews out of shul. Others give up for shul all over the world. All shuls, closed yeshivas, boys schools, girls schools, institutions, mikvoys, all over the world, never happened. Such darkness never happened. So therefore, it's only simple that this intensification, unprecedented intensification of darkness is for one reason. It's the darkness before the Geulah Ho'amiti Suyashlimo. There's going to be an unprecedented light, and as the Amit al says, a light greater than the light of Matan Tele, the light of Moshiach. And this is the unprecedented darkness that we are experiencing before the unprecedented light of Mashiach, a greater light than Martin Taylor. What can be a greater light than Martin Taylor? The light of Mashiach. That's what the Mithal says. Unfortunately, we can see it with our own eyes. We can see the darkness with our own eyes. And therefore, Emil Tashem, they should bring about, and will bring about, Emil Tashem, the unprecedented light of Mashiach, the unprecedented light of the Gullah Amiti Suyashlima coming our way. Gesunte Heit und Fedeleche Heit. Take it Yad Mamish. We mentioned on this program more than once. But you see it, once you heard about it, you see it from dozens and dozens of letters of the Rebbe, where he writes that Tracht Gut, Vet Sein Gut, is not just a slogan. And it's not a slogan at all, it's a way of life. By thinking that it's going to be good, we are changing everything. Somebody came to the Tzemach Tzedek for a bloche. Tzemach Tzedek says, Tzedek good with Zayn good. One would argue, if he needed a fool, let him go to a doctor. What does it mean? You are going to think good and he's going to become well? And the Rebbe brings the Zehar. The Zehar says that we are basically a reflection. If we smile, we get a smile back. If we frown, we get a frown back from Almighty God. Somebody wants us the question. You want your friend to smile. And for whatever reason, he's not smiling, he's not smiling, she's not smiling. What do you do? And the simple aid says, you smile at them. The Rebbe said, this is not to tell anybody what to, what to do. But that's what it says. You smile at them. Why? Because when you smile at, at them, you're going to solicit back a smile from them. Now, that may not be, not, not be that easy. You may have to smile once. You may have to smile again and again if you don't mind. But it's going to work. Because when you smile at them, they are going to smile back. Now, this is when you deal with an individual. Now you're dealing with God. And for whatever reason, it's not smiling. Not now. He's not smiling. But you want him to smile. So the way he, the, the answer to that is, you smile at him. And then he promised he has to smile back. I am upon him, upon him. Can live all them, all them. So if we smile, that's what Isaiah says. If we smile to God, what we get back is a smile. A happy face. Unpinned in healing. A happy face in the language of, 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 of the Isaiah. We say it every Friday night. So therefore, and 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 Hasri Sholem. What what we down what we offer is a frown is a is a sour face. What we bring down, what we download, if you may, is something sour which you don't want. So therefore, by us smiling, tracht gut tracht gut means you're smiling, you're happy, and that generates the smile from above. That Almighty God would also do the smiling thing. He will show us a smiling face, and I say that's all we need. All we need is God to smile our way. And in Mir Tashem, things are going to work out. So all the Jews who need are the Fuah Shlema, and there are so many who need the Fuah Shlema. And there are so many in Quran Heights who need the Fuah Shlema. We've suffered enough. 
that all Jews who need the four shlemo have the four kerevo shlemo besei chshal chile yamei besi siloil. All collectively, one are the four shlemo for everyone, and are the chosyomim v'shonim tevis. And the Jews, Baal Hashem, who are well, should continue to be that way, should continue to be well with their families. And let him, us, everyone, Yochig is Chagamasa, the Rebbenish Masaydin writes someplace, but did so over Chedvo that he should celebrate and he should enjoy Chagamasa with joy and with happiness. Kainti Yelonu, that everyone, everyone should celebrate and 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 joyously. A kosher and a fleilach and pesach. Must tell you that we say that we would always say in good days. A kosher and a fleilach and pesach. And there were those who would not really understand. A kosher and Pesach we understand. A Fedelech and Pesach. But the Rebbe knew what we don't know. That there is a need for a Fedelech and Pesach. And as someone says, A kosher and Pesach would sign. A Fedelech and Pesach. All Jews throughout the world. A kosher and a Fedelech and Pesach. Gesunde heit und Fedelech heit. Rabbi say, Concerning, now we owe you the story. We mentioned before um, the customary story. I heard the story from a Jew who was part of the story. The year was 1986. This individual went to college to Israel. Not a Lubavitcher. Then he came to New York. He heard that the Rebbe is giving out dollars. A dollar, a baloche. So, he wants a dollar and he wants a baloche. Comes Sunday morning. And the Rebbe gives him a dollar. And the Rebbe gives, says to him, baloche v'atzloche. Now, after that, the Rebbe gives him another dollar. And the Rebbe says, this is for your business. He walked out. Business. He didn't ask anything about his business. He wasn't thinking now about a business. He's a student. The Rebbe says, this is for your business. He went back to Israel, worked for a company, and that company sent them to England. In England, in the year 1988, Tovshin Memches, he got married, and he started a restaurant, a small restaurant for 10 people, 10 seats, a small restaurant. And he started a business. Um, in, but he had uh, he had the dollar of the Rebbe, so he took the dollar of the Rebbe, and my friend said that he saw the dollar. He, he put it in the in the cash registry. He put the dollar in, and then he also put in another few uh, pounds so that he should have in the morning. But that's what he put. The dollar bill was there, and another few few pounds. In. In 1995, there was a robbery. And they took all the money, which he left a little bit of money, should have change for tomorrow. That they took, but the Rebbe's dollar, they left. Now, he has the Rebbe's dollar, and he knows the Rebbe gave him this dollar for success in this business. The Rebbe said, this is for your business. And this dollar reminds him of what the Rebbe said. He continued the business. Today, Bodo Hashem, instead of ten, a 10-people 10 restaurant, he has a 170-people restaurant. And Bodo Hashem is doing very, very well. And my friend who told me the story he said, I, I saw the cash, the, the cash register, and I saw the Rebbe's dollar there. So this is the dollar that the Rebbe gave him in 1986. And this is, the, and without asking, this is for your business. And Bodu Hashem, it is now, thanks to the Rebbe's Bedoche, a wonderful, wonderful business. Rabbi Isai, concerning the question. And concerning the Rebbe's question, why is it Shabbos HaKotl? Yes, 
It's a great miracle. But there are so many great miracles that we had. You want to know? They were all great miracles. Why is this Shabbos called Shabbos HaGodl? And the Rebbe explains that and Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim is the forerunner for all the Geulahs, and especially now, when the last generation of Golos, the first generation of Geulah, and we want to continue Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, but in a stronger way. Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, as Teisvah says, was a Geulah sheyesh achare otzal. There was after that, there was agony. We're still in Golos. But now we want a Geulah who amitis vi ashlim, a Geulah she'ein achare otzal. So therefore, what we want, we want to remove evil from the world. So what do we see here? And not only we want to remove evil, evil from the world, because this is the forerunner of, of the Gulo Amitis Vyashlemo, where the Novia says, that I, will, that I will remove the spirit of uncleanliness from the world, the Novi Inzchalia. So therefore, what we are looking in Mitzrayim is, not only it should be, it should be a Geulo, we should look for a Geulo that should remove all evil. And not only that, it should transform the evil into good. His hapcho hashecho in the language of the Zezeha, l'inhelo to light, that the darkness should become light, and that's a forerunner for the Gulo Amitis Vyashlimo, that the darkness of Golus now becomes the light of the Gulo. Where do you see that in a, in a miracle? You see it in the miracle of Makas Bechelis. It's not, just a, it's not just that they waged war. That's not a miracle. The fact that they waged war is not a miracle. But the fact that the Bechelis turned against their elders, the Makim Mitzrayim Bechelihem, in other words, not only did they wage a war, it's the Bechelis who waged a war against Pali. The Makim Mitzrayim Bechelihem. Pali had a lot of Makis before. But this Makim is different. It's Bivchiyadehim, that the Bchilis of Mitzrayim, within Pali, within Mitzrayim, they waged the war and they were successful. And therefore, such a Ness we do not find. We do not find. This we call Ness Godl. Why? That not only did the nature of Teva change, however, the nature went into Teva. In other words, the miracle went into Teva. The miracle of the Pchelis turning against Pali went into, went, into, went into Teva. To the extent someone from the side would say, there's no big miracle. They don't want to get killed. However, this is such a miracle that broke through the laws of nature and worked within the laws of nature and broke the laws of nature from the inside. Lemaki mitzelayim bivchelayim. We are the last generation of Golos. We are the first generation of Gulo. And therefore, all the details about miracles, about the Gulo Amitis Vyashlemo, are so important. Shabbos is Yud Nisun. Sunday is Yud Aleph Nisun, the Rebbe's birthday. There were those who said, not Lubavitch Chassidim. That the Rebbe is Pele Hadelis. That the Rebbe is the miracle of the generations. In simple language, you hear it so many times. The Rebbe never took a day's vacation. Now, one would argue, so what's the big thing? A day's vacation, that's how you measure a person? Nevertheless, in history, you don't find it. You don't find a person who never took a day's vacation. The Rebbe's work in this world was one to bring the Gulo Hamitis Vyashlemo. Pele Hadeiris, the miracle of generations, because the Rebbe's reach was all over the world. Yes, there were great, uh, the great Sadiqim before, but the reach was limited. The Rebbe's reach, Pele Hadeiris, was throughout, throughout the world. 
more than once when they were sitting at a meeting of the government of Israel, and they wanted to do something uh, concerning giving away shtochim, and one of them would say, Umaya gidal Rabbi Milubavich? And what's the Lubavitch Rebbe going to say about this? The Rebbe's reach was and is universal, and it becomes more universal each and every single day. Well, Hashem, the Rebbe's shluchim, the Rebbe's talmidim, the Rebbe's chassidim, reach all over the world. And Baruch Hashem, to spread the light of Yiddishkeit all over the world as we see it. And the Rebbe is Pele HaDeles. Almighty God never had a person like the Rebbe that took care of all of his, of his work throughout the world. And what was the mission of the Rebbe? The Rebbe says in his own words, Yud Shvat Tov Shin Yud Aleph. What's his administration, quote unquote, going to accomplish? Because in America there is there uh, uh, there is a custom, when there is a new president, he makes a statement as to what he's going to accomplish. Avid lekalto said the Rebbe. As Azal lekalto Avid kini muso. Which means if you come to a town, you do as the rules of the town. The rules of this country is a new president, a new leader, makes a statement as to what he's going to accomplish. And the Rebbe made the statement. He's going to accomplish the Gulu Hamitis Vashlemo the Pale Mamish. So this is the Rebbe's mission. What the Rebbe said more than once, that he needs everyone to help. And it's the foot soldiers that bring the victory. And the Mirza Hashem, through the foot soldiers of all Jews throughout the world, we will bring about the Tashem, the great victory. The victory that the Rebbe worked for all the time and is working for now.